Welcome to my presentation. My name is Kimberly Simmon. I am a New York State Certified Nursery Landscape Professional. I also own KMS Native Plants in Lake Grove, and I serve on the board with Rewild Long Island in Port Washington. So let's get started. Everybody wants butterflies, but they always forget the most important part. You need host plants. So let's get started. The life cycle of a butterfly, also known as metamorphosis. In stage one, there is an egg, and it is in this stage for about three to seven days. The female adult butterfly will lay this egg in the spring, summer, or fall, depending on the species. Most caterpillars eat their own eggshell as their first meal. Stage two, also known as the feeding stage, and lasts about two to five weeks. It is also the most vulnerable time in its life cycle. There are five instar stages for caterpillars. As a caterpillar grows, it must shed its exoskeleton. The molted skin is called an exuviae. To the caterpillar, it's just another tasty meal. At the end of the fifth instar, the caterpillar will set off to find a place to pupate. This can be as far as 30 feet from their host plant. Caterpillars usually finish feeding once they hit about two to three inches, depending on the species. Stage three is the pupa or chrysalis stage and may last one to two weeks or a full winter. Some species can overwinter this way. This is known as diapause. Like the swallowtail can overwinter and others cannot, like the monarch. Stage four, the adult or butterfly and may last one to three weeks or longer. This is also known as the reproductive stage. It takes several hours for the newly emerged crumpled wings to dry and straighten out before they can take to the sky. Many wonder what happens when it gets cold. Diapause happens. What is diapause? Diapause is the insect's version of hibernation. Butterflies are able to delay development during periods of adverse environmental conditions like our winters here. Some butterflies enter diapause as a butterfly, finding cracks in rocks or tree bark to rest. This includes the morning cloak and question mark butterflies. Others enter diapause as eggs in the leaf litter of its host plant. This includes some hair streaks and skippers. Some overwinter as caterpillars buried deep in leaf litter in the soil or rolled into a shelter of leaves. These include some skippers, fritillaries, and dusky wings. Lastly, some overwinter in chrysalis form like the eastern black swallowtail, giant swallowtail, and several skippers. Beautiful nectar-filled flowers are great for feeding the butterflies but without their larval host plants, you are missing the most important part of their life cycle. What is a host plant, you ask? A host plant is simply a plant that is used by a specific species for food. For this presentation, I will be focusing on the native host plants of the butterflies in our area. The pictures here are the lovely Monarda fistulosa, also known as wild bergamot. Yes, that's what you can make tea out of. And the other lovely yellow flower is Heliopsis helianthoides, and that is also known as a false sunflower. These are great nectar-filled flowers. I'm going to start with the monarch butterfly, the world's most well-known butterfly. The wingspan is two and three quarters to five inches. It has one to three broods per year. Generation four and some of generation three, which you see in the fall, are the ones that will migrate 3,000 miles or more to hibernate along the west coast of Mexico. Generation one comes from these butterflies and you usually see them come late spring. Important nectar plants for the adults, especially the ones who are going off on their journey, include the milkweeds, which are a host plant also, Boneset, New York Ironweed, Blazing Star, Aster, and Goldenrod. 
In the pictures here, I'm going to show you something fun. If you look closely, you'll see these two little spots on the bottom, like on the insides of the bottom wings. This is a female. If you look at the other picture, you don't see those little dots. That is a female. Very exciting. You can now sex your monarch butterflies. This is also in this picture here. This is the Asclepius incarnata, which is swamp milkweed. Lovely flowers and fantastic also for our native bees. Host plants for the monarch caterpillars. The monarch only consumes plants in the milkweed family. Most milkweeds contain cardiac glycosides, which is a chemical compound that is stored in the bodies of both the caterpillar and the adult. This makes them very distasteful to predators. Be aware though that many wasps, like the northern and European paper wasps, can eat the first and second instars of the monarch caterpillar. This is because they have not eaten enough of the milkweed to get the chemical in their bodies. Butterfly weed we'll look at first, which is the orange flowering variety of milkweed. It blooms in July through August, gets to be about 18 to 30 inches tall, prefers full sun and dry to average but well-drained soil. All of our milkweeds have to have well-drained soil. They don't like to sit in wet soils. The next one is world milkweed which has white flowers, which is very unusual for our milkweeds. It blooms July through August, can be 12 to 36 inches tall, will take sun and part shade, dry to moist soil, but again, well drained. Common milkweed and showy milkweed are fantastic plants and actually the favorites of our monarch caterpillars. The only thing is they're very, very, very aggressive. So if you have a small garden and don't want it to take over, I recommend planting it in a planter. They're fantastic in planters. Um, common milkweed has lovely fragrant purple pink flowers, blooms in June through July, and is about 24 to 60 inches tall, depending on how happy it is prefers full sun and again, dry to moist soil. Showy milkweed gets its name because its flowers are absolutely gorgeous and showy. It blooms in the summer, just like all the other ones, with a 24 to 60 inch tall habit, full sun, dry to moist, but again, well-drained soil. The Eastern Black Swallowtail Butterfly has a wingspan of three and a quarter to four and a quarter inches. One to two broods from April through October, and the last brood will hibernate here as a chrysalis throughout our winter, and we call this diapause. If you look closely at the first picture here, you will see that she has lain four eggs here on this fennel. It's so much fun to watch them lay eggs. I, I definitely recommend watching them if you ever get a chance. The second picture is one of the larvae on Zizia aurea, which is golden alexanders. Host plants for the eastern black swallowtail caterpillars include Zizia aurea, also known as golden alexanders, and Zizia aptera, known as heartleaf alexanders. Both species are native to Long Island and have yellow flowers in May through July. They prefer full sun to partial sun, dry to wet soil, but well drained. They do not like to sit in water. It is also an early blooming nectar source for our native bees. Sometimes the main plant doesn't live that long, but don't worry, she will self sow and you will have plenty of zizia for the rest of your life. Eastern black swallowtail will also eat non-native herbs, including dill, fennel, parsley, and rue. Some people call it the parsley worm, which that just kills me because it is so just not a parsley worm. So if you can and you do have a little veggie or herb garden, plant a little on the side for our little friends. The Spicebush Swallowtail. These are some of my favorites because they all look completely different in their stages. 
The wingspan is anywhere from two and three quarters to five inches. They have two broods per year. The caterpillars live in a folded over leaf during the day and they feed at night. If you look closely at this one here, the little orange guy, the mat that it's laying down, that is the silk. And as it hardens, it closes the leaf around them. And this hopefully deters predators from getting them during the day. Once they turn yellow, they stop feeding and search for a place to pupate. Host plants for the spicebush swallowtail caterpillar include Magnolia virginiana, also known as Sweet Bay. It is native to Long Island, flowers in May through June, prefers sun to partial shade and average to wet but acidic soil. It will grow 15 to 20 feet and just a side note, the flowers have a lovely sweet citrusy smell to them. Next is Liriodendron tulipifera also known as tulip tree, native to Long Island, flowers in May through June, prefers sun to partial shade, is very adaptable to all kinds of soils, but it must be well drained. It will grow to be about 60 feet tall. Most don't even notice her flowers because when she is flowering, she is fully leafed out. Most notice her flowers when you're walking under them and see the almost spent flowers on the ground, which is still pretty cool. Next, Sassafras albedum, also known as Sassafras, and also one of my absolute favorite trees. It is native to Long Island. It flowers in April through May. Prefers sun to partial shade and will take full sun. Very adaptable to many soils. And again, well-drained, will get to be 30 to 60 feet tall, and she does sucker out to form a colony. Um, if you're lucky enough, you'll have a female, and then you'll also get berries. Lastly, Lindera benzwin, which is spice bush, native to Long Island. It flowers in March through April. Prefers sun through shade, but preferably part shade. Prefers moist soil, but again, well-drained. It grows eight to 12 feet. And another little side note on this one, like I said, she is a fantastic plant. And if you're lucky enough to get a female, you'll also get berries on them. The Eastern Tiger Swallowtail has a wingspan of two and a half to four and a half inches, has two broods from May through September, and the caterpillars, just like the spice bush caterpillars, live in folded over leaves during the day and feed at night. They also make these silk mats where when it dries, it encircles them in to keep them away from predators. The adult in this picture is nectaring on Dutzia gracilis nico, which is not native, but a fantastic nectar plant. Host plants for the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. The first one is Telea trifoliata, also known as hop tree, also known as wafer ash, and also known as this horrible name, the poison ivy tree, because of its three shiny leaves. It is native to Long Island. It has, as you see, pale green flowers in June, and it's followed by these fantastic showy seed wafers. It gets to be about 15 to 20 feet tall, it is a slow grower. It prefers full sun to full shade. There's the bonus right there. It also prefers dry to wet but well-drained soil. It is a fantastic understory shrub and more people should have this plant in their yard. The second is Betula nigra, which is also known as river birch. Again, native to Long Island. It has catkins in April through May. It gets to be between 40 to 70 feet tall. It prefers sun to partial shade and moist to wet soil. It does adapt to soil. Um, it doesn't really need to be moist. As long as it's average, it will do okay, but it does not like to dry out. A bonus on this one is the fantastic peeling bark, as you see in the picture. And the third one we already discussed, and that's the Magnolia virginiana, 
also known as sweet bay. And just to remind you, it has the intoxicating fragrance in the flowers. Host plants for the silver spotted skipper. Their wingspan is one and three quarters to two and five eighths inches. They have two broods from May through September. This is fun. The females lay their eggs near the host and the caterpillars must find their proper host on their own. Young caterpillars shelter in a small piece of folded leaf. Older caterpillars rest in silk nest, as you see in the one in the center there. What they do is they gather several leaves and then spin themselves a little silk nest. Their host plant is Wisteria frutescens. This is our native Wisteria, not the invasive varieties. It is native to southeastern U.S. It is very adaptable to many soil conditions and prefers sun to partial sun. The best one, I think, is Amethyst Falls, which is a fragrant dwarf variety that blooms on new growth, meaning this can be cut back every spring to keep it in check. It is also fantastic in a planter. Blue Moon is a little crazier. It needs a lot of room and a very strong support. It is quite fragrant, but it does need root pruning to stimulate flowering. Host plant for the Pearl Crescent butterfly. The Pearl Crescent has a wingspan of one and a quarter to one and three quarter inches. There are several broods from April through November. The host plants include many of our fall blooming asters like Blue Wood Aster, New England Aster, Smooth Aster, and Heath Aster. These are all quite adaptable to many soil types as long as the soil is well drained. Aster ericoides, also known as our Heath Aster, can actually tolerate a pretty dry soil. Host plants for the morning cloak. This is a great little butterfly as it doesn't look like any other butterfly out there. The wingspan is anywhere from two and a quarter to four inches. It only has one brood June through July. Caterpillars live in a communal web and feed together on the young leaves of the host plant. They can defoliate an entire branch, but to me, this is so worth it just to have these around. Contrary to the myth, they are not stinging, they do not bite, and many people think they're poisonous, but you just might be allergic to them, that's why you may get a rash. Salix nigra, also known as black willow, is one of their host plants. It is native to Long Island, gets catkins in April, will grow 10 to 60 feet tall, depending how happy they are, prefers moist to wet soil and sun to partial shade. Willows are also fantastic hosts to many other butterflies, including the tiger swallowtail, red spotted purples, and several hair streaks. Their other host, Celtis occidentalis, is also known as common hackberry, is another fantastic wildlife tree that I mentioned earlier. Spring and summer azures. These little cuties used to be thought of as the same exact species but in recent decades, they have now split them into the spring and summer. They have a wingspan of three quarters to one and three quarters inches. The spring azure has one brood per year and the summer azure has several broods between May through October. The female lays her eggs on twigs of woody host plants as opposed to herbaceous plants. Instead of most larvae that eat leaves, these eat the buds and flowers of its host plants, but it's usually not noticeable, so it's nothing to be worried about. It does form its chrysalis in leaf litter, so please, again, leave some leaf litter around if you can. Adults may only live for a few days. Host plants for the spring and summer azures. First, we'll start with Cornus racemosa also known as gray dogwood, and also known as one of my absolute favorite shrubs. It has white flowers in May through June, followed by white berries. These berries are enjoyed by birds and small mammals. It prefers sun to shade, 
average to wet soil, and can grow anywhere from 10 to 15 feet tall. It is native to eastern North America, including Long Island. Next, we have trumpet honeysuckle with its lovely scarlet and red and yellow trumpet flowers in May through June. It prefers sun to partial shade, average but well-drained soil, and can get anywhere from 10 to 20 feet tall. It is an eastern and southeastern United States native, including Long Island. It also attracts hummingbirds. Actea racemosa, also known as black cohosh, has fragrant, creamy white flowers in July through August, partial to full shade, and prefers average to moist but rich and acidic soil, can grow anywhere from 36 to 60 inches tall, and is native to North America, including Long Island. This is such an underused shade plant and more people should have this in their garden. Lastly is Cornus Florida, also known as common dogwood. It has white flowers in April through May, prefers partial shade to full shade, and average to moist soil. It can get anywhere from 15 to 30 feet tall, and birds and small mammals will also eat the fruit of this dogwood. It is native to eastern North America, including Long Island. Horace's dusky wing is our next butterfly. It has a wingspan of about two inches. It has two broods per year from April to September. The caterpillars feed on young leaves and rest in leaf nests. The last brood does hibernate here in the winter. Host plants include red and white oaks, including willow oak, northern red oak, and scrub oak. The red banded hair streak. This is one of my favorite little butterflies. It has a wingspan of 7 eighths inches to 1 and a quarter inches. It has two broods from April through October, and this cutie feeds on fallen leaves of sumacs and oaks. Yes, I said the fallen leaves. This is a reason you need to leave as many fallen leaves as you possibly can on your property because this little fella here is eating them. If you look closely at this little butterfly here, you're going to see there's little tails here on them. Well, these little tails, as they're feeding, they move their wings up and down. As they move these up and down, it is supposed to deter other predators thinking that they are something a little more sinister than what they really are. Their host plants include different roost species. There are four varieties native to Long Island. Roost aromatica, Roost coppolina, Roost glabra, and Roost typhina. These all range anywhere from 12 to 35 feet tall. They prefer full sun to partial shade. They do prefer dry to average but well-drained soil. There is a dwarf variety out there called Grow Low, which only gets about, I think, two feet tall to three feet tall, but it does get eight feet wide. That one is absolutely fantastic for sunny areas that need erosion control. If you have the room for these, they're fantastic as, like I said, erosion control. They are also fantastic in a planter if you don't have the room on your property. Host plant for the question mark butterfly. I always love this one because people always look at me like I'm crazy when I say question mark, but that is its name. It has a wingspan of two and a quarter to three inches. It has two broods per year, and the adult will hibernate through the winter here. Eggs are not laid on the host plants, so amusing. And the caterpillar must find its host plant once it hatches. Some do hibernate here, and some fly south. Celtis occidentalis, the common hackberry, which is native to Long Island, is one of the host plants. It flowers in April through May and can get to be about 40 to 60 feet tall. It prefers sun to shade and dry, moist, or wet soil. It also makes a fantastic shade tree. Host plants for the snowberry clearwing moth, also known as the hummingbird moth. I couldn't do this little talk without having some moths involved. The wingspan is one and a quarter to two inches. 
There are two broods from March to August. When this little caterpillar is done feeding, it just drops wherever it is into the leaf litter below to form its cocoon. So again, I beg you, if you can do it, please leave some leaf litter around. All of our critters really need it. Host plants include Lanicera sempervirens, coral honeysuckle, which I talked about earlier, and other host plants are coralberry and snowberry and also bush honeysuckle. The polyphemus moth, also known as the giant silk moth. This giant beauty has a wingspan of three to five inches. Its caterpillar can be about the size of your thumb. It's absolutely amazing. It has one brood from May through July. And once they start eating from one host, they do not move to another host plant. They stay where they are. Host plants include oak, hickory, elm, cherry, willow, maple, and birch. This beautiful moth does not feed, which is true of many moths. This concludes my presentation on butterflies and their host plants. I would like to leave you with a little proverb from Chuang Tzu. Just when the caterpillar thought the world was over, it became a butterfly. This is a great reminder to persevere through the journey and enjoy it as you go along. Thank you again, everybody, and happy gardening.